Hey, hey, everybody. Go to. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it. So here, this is, the, this is our walkthrough bat of the uh, Blue Dogs Hollow. Just sort of show off some of the techniques and tricks that, uh, or a more variety of techniques and tricks that we can do. So I can hug you. Not using the, the normal deck, just speed deck to go quickly through it all. Things like that. It's because I feel like in the normal playthrough, you can't really express all the things that are possible and capable of being done. But we'll grab our typical supplies. The Redden have been showing up in increasing numbers around Finleyville, and I think I know Sort of. Why. Bad Seed is, is broken up into, you know, a very long open area. Try and walk down the hill to the farm. Last transmission we received from and this, area, the, the issue with this area is the bushes, right? Because it's hard to Why see. You wait for us? We could have handled this. I mean, Please get too close. Not even immune. Because I needed someone that followed orders. And how did that work out for you? I needed people I could trust. So when it comes to head. going down this hill, there's basically two paths, left and right. Blue dog mine. There's actually quite a bit of space over here. But essentially, when you're when you're what I always like to talk about, if you're presented with a big open area, choose one or the other, right or left, right? And this is where you end up if you go right, like hard right all the way. You can sort of see it's all foilaged up and a lot of bushes. And so bad. I feel like in this area there's a lot of friendly fire. A lot of zombies get real close to you without you realizing. If you walk down the main path, then everything on both sides swarms you. So I actually like the left side more than the right side. It's more open. Things can like be standing up here, and there's still issues with things showing up behind you and, and whacking you, giving you a good whacking, you know what I mean? But I find this the left side to be safer. And this is a point where you really do want to... Oh. Reloading. The fog, the fog kind of sucks here as far as demonstrating, but basically, you know... Just want to aggro as many zombies as you can. Let them run towards you, and then take that space. But you can just sort of see this. If you just pick left or right, either way, whatever you prefer, whatever you feel more comfortable with. But it's always safer to have your back against the wall. Cutting cross country will save you time on foot. This is cool. You're totally you can drive back with <laughs> and the rest of his team. One thing that I want to demonstrate or show off is that if there's oh, birds yeah. right here and birds right here, it'll sort of feel like you need to kill one or the other in order to get by. But actually, right here in the bushes, yeah. there's a secret path. Walk through these bushes. Don't sprint. Oh, climb on top. There. And you'll be in between the two birds without disturbing them. Just show you again, because this is a this is like a this is a lifesaver, like a big lifesaver. There's birds right here. You just walk through these mysterious bushes to Narnia. Then you can jump down. How did this happen? One minute everything's fine, and then this. <laughs> Nice. And when it comes to left and right, I highly prefer left. Though things can spawn and jump over this fence a lot of times. Or I highly prefer left because again, just bushes and nonsense over there. It's hard to see. Things can get close to you without you getting line of sight on it. This bridge, though, this is really the first true holdout holdout point that we have on this map. Up until this point, um, if any sort of horde event happens when we were out there, Look. it's really, really hard to deal with because it's hard to get your back against the wall and feel safe. But this bridge, as you can see, the only way the only way up here is this bridge, or is this path. And at the very most, they'll climb up right here on these sides, but they won't climb up over here. So a great place to put your back against and pull off the hordes. You wear a bullet damage. Watch out, Crusher! Thanks for the hit. Cover me, reloading! I've received a report of some unusual.
unusual organic structures out your way from one of our patrols. Not sure if it's written. When it comes to other places that you can hold out at, I'll sleep better if you take There's this shed and there's another one by the house. The two sheds. They're you decent places to hold out, especially if you have a melee character, they can be really good places to hold out at. Oh yeah. But otherwise, not just not a big deal, or not not a big deal, not an ideal place to hold out these two sheds. Golden, golden. But this sort of this an area. This is sort of naturally a map that's just sort of begging to be speed ran. This is the other shed. Uh, if you can't tell, this shed is actually more shallow. It's not as deep as the other one, so the first shed is actually better. In terms of getting yourself lots of space. In Nightmare Mode, there's going to be four nodes. In Recruit, there's only two. But we can still demonstrate how... The timer works, because you, you guys have probably heard me say it a million times now that... There's a timer. We shoot one node, right? I tried to dodge it. Right, we shot that one orb, and all these orbs disappeared. The other two orbs are still up there. We can stack these nodes together. But when you shoot this first, first orb, the timer has begun. Timer has begun. Shooting the second orb does not affect that timer. It's about a 15 second timer. We can stack these horde events together. You can get on top of this barn from here. A little hard to tell in the fog. But the nest is right there, so you can stand on this mush and throw the grenade. Just it's, it's, it's just a feel. I just have a feel for how far the grenades are throw throwable. Watch out! Ammo for you. Ammo here. Sort of why I always prefer grenades in a lot of situations. I just feel like there's so much more versatility. There's way more versatility with the grenades. Other ways that you can jump on top of this barn, obviously the trailer and right there, right? I just, for this, if you were to sprint jump, a lot of times you don't make it, but typically you just jump, you jump, and at the peak of your jump, you go forward. And that's about it as far as getting on top of the barn. Now, if you were to fall off right here, we take fall damage. As you can see, lots of fall damage. But one thing that we can do to get off this barn safely, and you actually you don't you don't need a lot of movement speed for this. Don't be fooled by my my immense amounts of movement speed. You only, you, I think you can actually do this without extra movement speed, a normal jump. Basically, you jump under this. If you land anywhere on top of this piece of geometry, you slide off and don't take any fall damage. I do want to talk about the house for a quick minute. And this, this is not a great place to hold out. Three separate entrances. Each of which can become their own problem, basically. Now, obviously, in Nightmare Mode, this door will be a door. Just so you know. I've never seen this as a wood door before. But basically, the house isn't ideal, but it's not horrible. Especially if you open up the safe room, it gets a little more space. But essentially, there's just no real good angle for everyone to be safe. From all the doors. The last thing I want to talk about that is sort of...
horn for good movement. Because uh, it's just, it's at this point where right we destroy the nest, and that releases that big old trailer, and it slowly floats down the river. It's like ten ish seconds before it gets there and becomes a bridge, and you can walk on it. What I see happen a lot is people shoot the nest, right? We kill the nest, and then they go for it. They sprint right here. They just, hey, over here. They just get here immediately. And then keep in mind, the horde is chasing us when we get here. The horde is chasing us, and I, what I see people, ha what happens is people get here, they're waiting for the bridge, and then they get overwhelmed. They get totally overwhelmed by the horde that's chasing them. What I, what I would prefer to do is you destroy the nest, you jump down. And we're actually, I like to run this way, right? The bridge is moving. The bridge is floating down the river, but we've the horde is chasing us, but they're not chasing us to the bridge. They're chasing us to this point. We we wait a little bit till we get overwhelmed, and then we and then we run to the bridge. And that way we keep the horde behind us, and the horde never really catches up with us. What the hell were those things? So that, that would be that's I think a huge help is when you blow the nest up, don't run straight to the bridge. Take the zombies on a. Take the zombies on a little trip. Like a little a golden goose chase, you know what I mean? Before you go straight to the bridge, otherwise you run the risk of getting overwhelmed at that bridge. And, and that's about it for bad seeds. There's not a whole lot to it. And bad seeds definitely encourages encourages you to speed run. There's no like super great place to hold out at the farm. Once you're there for the horde. So ideally, maybe you do have a melee character. And you hold out in one of those sheds. That's about it. That's about it. Don't disturb my ben. We'll take a pain. We'll take some. We'll take the toolkit here. I remember them saying it So when it comes to this part, just let it go. verticality that we can reach okay, is always a, to our advantage. You know, so if um, you just stay on the high ground you know, a lot of the times, your hus you know what? stay up here. And, and keep in mind, you don't need to defend the car that you're standing on all the time. You can shoot, shoot, but once you get overwhelmed, you just jump somewhere else. Right? Get overwhelmed, jump somewhere else. Don't be fooled though. If you're standing on top of one of these cars, the zombie can stand right there and punch you. Basically, we want to be in a position where the zombie has to climb up in order to get to us. That gives us extra time to shoot him and extra time to run away if that's what we want to do. Hold on, my baby's crying real fast. All right, hopefully the kid is satisfied. The kid will leave uh, dead to game, because we're gamers. Ladies first. But essentially, you just want to stay in the high ground. And there's lots of opportunity in this tunnel to 
just shoot all the zombies as far as you can see. Just shoot all the way down the tunnel, aggro them, make them run to you. Again, just lots of verticality. Overwhelmed, we jump up. A lot of these trucks you can jump back and forth, you sort of creating like an infinite loop. Jump here, shoot the zombies that are climbing up. Clear the truck, jump back up, shoot the zombies climbing up. Never allowed myself to get there. And a lot of times you can just kill the zombies on the truck that you want to jump Too back late. to. I mean, you're done. Just, just jump back Ish. and forth. And Still you can good. do Maybe not most lot, of these jumps without any you know, extra movement some. speed. Maybe. But I do this for future generations. If there's future generations. I aim to make sure there is. <laughs> Sorry, I know what you mean, but it's funnier the way I heard it in my head. And when it comes to playing this part legit, right? The news I want to mention, there are multiple ways over. If you have enough movement speed, which we do at this point, you do that jump, right? There's an invisible hole here that is blocked. But once we start the trailer, this hole opens up right there. And if you have a crap ton of movement speed, you can jump Just through that hole from that truck. Otherwise, here? you can take the minigun and you put it right here. Then you climb on top of the minigun and you can jump through that hole. Again, all of this requires that the trailer has begun. But you can actually hold out right here. Ammo here. This is the best place to hold out at on this section. Like, by far. It's the only place where you can comfortably put your back against the wall. You can set up your propane tanks. And etc. Want to get real cheeky, you can keep a propane tank back here with you. Like over here. My propane. I broke my propane. Then you just chill. And you can have her to stand on top of this. The zombies will be jumping down right here. You have someone stand on top of this and shoot and basically keep a watch for zombies. We wear that billboard. Things like hawkers and seniors like to jump into that billboard. Shot the propane tank. You just sort of use the minigun when the mutations are here. Use your grenades if necessary, right? All this is made so much easier if you have bomb squad grenades at the very minimum. That's the key. When you're holding out like this, positioning is what kills the common ridden. And then either we need open space or tons of damage, which grenades provide, to kill the mutations when they show up. And this is actually, even with bots, this is relatively easy to do on Nightmare Mode. Usually the bots don't come out quite Man, as healthy as this. Now this is part of the map of Hell's Bells where you need to get really good pacing. You can jump over here and get yourself in a pretty tight corner, but beware. Obviously mutations. This is a really nice, nice tight corner that you can melee and punch from and shoot. Safe room right there. So this is the part that you can still pretty pretty comfortably play in a normal sense, even when you have bots. Well, I'm going to sort of demonstrate a nice, clean, comfortable path that you can take. Essentially, you pick left or right, doesn't really matter. 
that's Hoffman's job. A lot of times it's dictated by where the birds are. Yeah, I felt it too. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Bandages here. There's an abandoned shelter ahead. Basically, you're gonna play this part crazy. relatively normal. Moved on. But it's at this Doesn't point that I highly recommend that you actually just run with your team, because there's no good place to hold out in the in the woods. So if anything goes wrong, if any horde is called, you're totally trapped. And I would recommend sticking to the left. And there is some weird geometry here that we have to mantle on top of that the zombies don't have to. Some practice and and repetition, you get used to it. But basically, you just stick to the left and run. I think when you run this, the shorter path, you get to here. And this double tree, this, I don't know. Get used to this as a landmark, because this is the, the shortest path to where we need to go here. The baby's upset again. Do keep in mind that if you do the skip over that trailer that I sort of sort of demonstrated. If you get to the church before the objective says continue to the church, then you will soft lock the game. Oh, I forgot we have bots. We need to shut the church door. Don't forget the church, shut the church door. But the key here is to get one thing onto as many doors as the windows as possible. So, fortifying two or three windows, that's sort of ideal. And then you sort of just reassess, because not all of the windows are going to be under siege. So it's okay to actually leave some of the windows unattended to. Because you just need to board up the windows that are, that are being attacked. But I think that demonstrated pretty well in the actual playthrough. Hold on, I gotta deal with the baby one more time here. And abandoned is really where everyone's run dies. Um, right, this is the hard part. Can do it with pipe bombs or grenades. Some people, you know, I think a lot of people prefer pipe bombs. I'm the only guy who loves grenades. I'm out. Essentially, my general strategy is if I have bots, I will actually run. All the way here. We can throw a pipe bomb here at the start. But you can also run to this corner. Get the bots to follow you. You'll aggro a lot of the zombies, but you're in a corner, you hold them off. If there's birds here on this tr on this truck, which they're almost always in a nightmare mode, blowing up this car will kill the birds on top of this truck. Let's check with the sleeper. It's funny how vacant the vacant the map feels when you're on recruit compared to nightmare. See if there's anything inside to trigger that for us. There is, there is. Now on every map there are invisible lines on the ground. And you probably heard me talk about it before. Once you pass over these lines, the game goes, alright, the player has made X amount of progress. Which means the map that we have cleared and covered now will no longer spawn zombies. A little hard to show off in recruit mode. Essentially, if there's a tons of zombies over here, and I go over and I shoot them and kill them and they run through and we, and we kill them all, then I run away and I do stuff and I maybe loot something and unlock this and blah blah blah. If you were to come back over here, you would look and you would see that some of those zombies that you killed have respawned. That's because we haven't passed that trigger yet. I'm gonna pass that trigger. There, there seems to be one of those invisible triggers 
just on the other side of this gas you station door. door. Hey, catch! Uh oh. Uh -oh. So what I find a lot of the times is, other than triggering alarms, which is key to not do and abandon, there seems to be, I think, an invisible line just past the gas station, because I find a lot of the times you sort of get stuck in this infinite loop of just walking to the door, trying to clear the corner, shooting your gun, and then zombies come out and attack you, and you have to back up and kill zombies, and then you step forward again, and you have to back up, and... It just seems like the game loves to keep spawning zombies just out of view while you're inside the gas station. So there's basically two paths. If you go right, you have a speedy zoom zoom. If you go left, you go over here. Clear this area out. And then sort of stabilize. You can move over to here, stabilize. Just be careful that zombies can spawn, climb on top of this and jump down on top of you. This isn't a, like, a great place to defend from, but it is pretty decent. As you can see, just like that. Let's just pull as many zombies as we can. Got this. Nothing to be scared of. Nice pep talk. Remind me the other option is something's trying to eat my face. Sort of be more aggressive, pull more aggro onto yourself in speed room. And if you hug this corner super tight, you don't really have too much collision here. If you hug this corner super tight and run, the sleeper will not even activate. Get up! Totally ignore you. Still no word from Pelisaro or his team. Don't let their fate be yours. Get to the mine and seal those tunnels. What the fuck, guys? Oh, shit! Sorry! Roger! Need to reload. There are a lot of mutations in recruit mode. But essentially, right, so when, when it comes to the speedrunning strat, if you can get through this gas station super, super quickly and then do this and you can climb on top of this and get over here and then you just sprint and jump, take your path either way, choose your poison, the faster you go, obviously the less populated this street is, it becomes empty. If you can get to the house quickly enough, the bots will teleport just around as you're getting to the house. The bots are super safe. Requires a lot of movement speed to do that. Otherwise, basically, we, we can get up here. Reloading. Just begin our journey. Ever as many zombies as we can. Hold them in. Do want to demonstrate that you can not aggro these birds by just walking. I own that corner. In the middle of nowhere. Be careful to shoot your gun as you're walking that tight corner. But you can just totally walk past those birds, not a problem. Omega charge. Now once you're here, I actually kind of prefer just going straight up the street. Just because it feels, I, I, you know, normally I talk about you want your back against the wall. The issue that we have here, though, is that even though, yes, we got our back against the wall. There's this weird little alleyway. Things can spawn and jump down on top of you, but it's here. If you need desperation, hold out point. The issue that I have going right... That once you get here, we're sort of in a really bad position to approach the house unless we take the unless we take the basement door. What 
Yeah, we here. Sort of see it's not a great angle to approach Reloading. these people. Uh, when you shoot your gun, things will jump out of the house on top of you. A lot of the times, when, if any sort of horde event is triggered, zombies will jump out of the house and stingers. And I don't know. I just I don't. I always have a really bad time approaching this area from this direction and trying to clear it out. If anything goes wrong, again, we need to back up this way, and and then, of course, we're stuck in this area, and things flank us. It just it always turns out really bad. Trust me. Now, I want you to notice this bot movement here. It's super important. It's also a reason why, because doing this solo, yeah, this, this garage, this basement door makes sense. Issue is, as you can see, is the bots do not like to enter the basement door. They just don't do it. So if you walk through this basement door, they're gonna pathfind to the ladder. They're literally gonna pathfind through that ladder. And if you haven't cleared the house out of sleepers, they're gonna run through the house and get and get caught by literally every single sleeper. Because they're gonna pathfind through the house down to the basement. Which happened to Holly. Very, very weird. The bots don't like walking through this door. So just keep that in mind that if you have bots on your team, they will not follow you through this door. They will pathfind all the way through the house. And that actually creates a lot of problems. Just don't tell anyone else or they'll all want some. Everyone's still in one place. Ain't seen much like a As you can see. I do want to talk about a typical approach to the house here. We would typically take the ladder, especially if we have bots. We were a sleeper right there, and sleeper up here. This room is a nightmare for sleepers. It can be right there, it can be right there, and it can be right there. We've got Holly. So the key to this house, basically, is if you can get to this house without a horde chasing you, and you have the luxury of slow clearing this house, that's best case scenario. Also, the bots like to break when you enter this room. Just keep in mind that when you shoot your gun inside the house, you're going to aggro zombies on the floor below you. So just keep in mind that the staircase is always going to be a point of contention. And etc. Slow clear. Over there. Sleeper can be there. Sleeper can be there. Sleeper can spawn there. Good RNG is if there's a medica medicine here. cabinet here, because then you can have the bots heal there. What you can even have here? them heal in between rounds, because uh, the bots being able to spam heal on a medicine there. cabinet is timed, I believe. So they'll heal once, and then, I don't know, a what couple minutes later, they'll shit? heal again. Sleeper. There's other places for a sleeper to spawn oh, in here as well. One, one right there. That so just keep that in mind. Safe. When it comes to holding off in the house, this is the right. best spot. You get the most distance, hold off the zombies, throw a grenade when you need to, etc. But I decent alternatives up. are actually right hey, here. Watch this yourself. corner also works a lot of the time. So if, if you've got two upstairs and two downstairs as far as the nodes go, you can clear the two upstairs and then get here, set up a double stack, and then do your double stack and hold out in this corner. And the, typically the bots do just fine here. It's about any corner in, in the basement is fine as well. Though, so it, it feels more cramped down here for some reason. It's best to wait for the bots, but not a big deal. If you stand in this corner right here, sort of this is the first point where that like opens up enough for a person to walk through it. This is typically the best place. And then we're all running. Do not fight in this alleyway. 
Not a good place to fight him. Hey, where'd everyone go? Get your track shoes on. Just down as quickly as you can. A lot of times too, you can have teammates who are who are who are respawning in some of these rooms. Keep in mind that as you get closer to this house, the spawn points for the zombies get closer. To the point that the zombies are literally just spawning. Reloading! Zombies are spawning in this corner right there. Like literally spawning right there and right here. So as we run up the alleyway, the spawn points of the zombies, there's gonna be zombies chasing you, but as you get closer. The spawns also get closer to you as well. So as you're getting into this house, there's actually going to be zombies spawning Something's and be like right behind you. So even if you go super duper fast, there's pretty much always going to be zombies pretty close to you. Sleeper there, sleeper there, sleeper there. So a lot of times that I do when I get to this door. And it's time to start shooting it open. Typically you want to shoot at the handle of the door because it doesn't break off and you can unload a whole magazine into it. But for this door right here, because the sleeper spawns literally right there, I would recommend that you blast part of the door right there. Just to kill that sleeper in case it's there. And then you can focus on shooting out the door handle. the sleeper locations are different in recruit mode than a nightmare mode. I have never seen that sleeper before in a nightmare mode, and I've done this map 50 times. I'm used to the sleeper right here, or right there. I've also never seen that sleeper as well for all the times that I've done this in nightmare mode. But essentially, at this point, we're, we're, we're pretty much running a lot of the times. If everyone's alive and you have the resources for it, you can restabilize inside this house, somewhere on the second floor, basically. But either way, holding out in this house is really annoying because no matter what room you choose it in or what hallway you do it in, it's, just, it's always going to be tight. And if you try to hold it at the staircase, things will spawn from this side of the house and go through the burned room and start to flank you. Most of the time, people are going to be basically speed speed running this part. And if you're moving fast, then destroying these mines really don't matter. Gonna take a look in here. It may look bad, but it's not. That's enough. Need a little light. There's not a whole lot to talk about here. It's what I would like to example is the predictive movement of the zombies sometimes when you're sprinting. So when it comes to these tight places, these tight spaces, and we're trying to... We're trying to zigzag our way through. We sort of see how the zombies are like, always sort of moving to intercept where I'm going to be. So one thing that you can do is you can just hug one wall That'll sort of force all the zombies to move to intercept you. And as you're getting close to them, then you bust a maneuver and you break to the other side and zig around them. Another thing, too, is when it comes to these staircases and there's zombies in your way, you, when you punch them, they don't always stumble out of their way. They might just stumble further in your path like this. Stick in your in your path and it really slows you down and we're getting punched in the back and things like that. So I would actually recommend that if you're going to that once you get to these staircases make sure that you have a full magazine of ammo. Make sure that you have a full magazine of ammo. Don't be reloading if you have most of your bullets still on the stairs because you basically just want to brute force your way through if you can. That's going to be more consistent, because when you punch a zombie... Oh. 
they don't always stumble straight backwards a lot of the time. Sometimes they go left or right. Especially on the staircase, because if you stumble the zombie, and then a part of their body hits a side of the railing, they're going to stumble in the opposite direction of that railing. Come on, this way! Leaper there. Leaper right there, a lot of the times. We're not going to reload, we still have 30 out of 20. Leaper right there. That sleeper right there is tricky to kill. A lot of times I just ignore it and everything turns out okay. But as you can sort of see, if you can just kill that first and then focus on the front, kill that sleeper and then ziggity, ziggity zam. But everything about Abandon sort of hinges on just getting to that house as safely as possible, as quickly as possible without triggering, triggering any alerts. If you can get the, into that house with four of your teammates, all four of you alive, if you get into that house comfortably and you're able to clear that house before you start start destroying the nodes and you have one bot, you can do it with one bot comfortably, so long as you have your grenades. Sound of Thunder. This map is definitely harder. Um, I would highly recommend that you watch the playthrough that I did for this on Nightmare Mode. Um, but a whole lot more to cover than what I covered on that map. Other than that, for the most part, you should always be leaving the safe room with all your full gear. Oh, we use flashbangs now for this. Now it's up to you to finish the job. Whatever. And make sure you bring my vehicle back. I can't afford to waste any more resources. I do want to demonstrate something here. So a lot of people like to get up here and they're gonna kill zombies up here that was an accident i swear it was an accident right don't do this this is actually really bad i think this is really really bad you might feel like you're you're being safe and you're clearing it out i be fast you be slow now you be the dead. issue though you I run into when you're doing this though is a lot of times you don't kill all the zombies that you are aggroing But when we get to the bottom here, and you've been doing that, there's a little, there's a little horde of zombies down here. And on nightmare mode, when there's way more zombies in this area, there's way more zombies that get aggroed. And I've seen people slide down after the whole team spent like three minutes slowly clearing out all these zombies from on the bridge. The first player who slides down gets, gets instantly killed. They die instantly. They land in the middle of ten zombies. All ten zombies... Whack him at the same time and he dies immediately. So do Look not shoot him. from that bridge because it's just not worth it. Typically the path I, I take is I'll jump down, I'll leap onto this jeep, I'll shoot some zombies, get overwhelmed, jump to this other jeep, jump over here. With the deck that I show off in solo queue, you can do it with that movement speed. If you don't have a little bit you don't if you don't have at least fifteen percent extra movement speed, you don't you can't make these jumps. You end up jumping and you end up like man mantling the side of it. So just keep that in mind. Because when you're mantling, you'll be vulnerable. And essentially, I'll just jump on that jeep, jump here. to this one, kill some zombies, jump in maybe over here, kill some zombies, do some loop de loops. Usually, I'll shoot this barrel. I don't actually ever use this barrel like during the actual cannon phase. Be sure to just go around, clear off all the zombies, and etc. Beware of sleeper here. Look, sleeper here, here, sleeper here, and a sleeper can spawn right here. See that? Just be aware of those things, because triggering a sleeper at this point is super duper annoying. No need to spawn extra zombies. In nightmare mode, you get less of these crates. There. I talked about this pretty extensively in the playthrough. I'm not going to talk about it so much before, but basically the, the basics are nice. you can have five shells on the ground at a time. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five. Put another shell. One, two, three, four, five. You can only have five shells. Sprint jump. I like to set it up like this. Get it all nice and ready. Right there, easy to grab. 
So if you're sprinting and then grab a thing and you jump almost instantly as you pick it up, you keep your momentum. Alright, because you can't move very fast with the shell. You move so slowly. So if you're sprinting and pick it up, you carry your momentum for a little bit, as you can tell. But if you're sprinting and then you jump, you carry a lot more momentum. You don't lose your momentum until you hit the ground, basically. You can do this with shells in the crate as well. Yeah. Blow this one into the cannon. In Nightmare Mode Campaign, you need seven shells shot. So the setup is very precise. Keep in mind, too, that random zombies will spawn this. in this arena just slowly over time. Oops. Oops. Well, what are you I'm ready. You ready? Kick ass. SMG here. But essentially, the setup is we have one shell inside the cannon, five on the ground, seven right here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Five on the ground, one in the cannon, one right there. That's how you set it up for nightmare mode. At any point, anything gets sketchy or messes up, do a flashbang. Because if you throw an actual grenade and you friendly fire on these shells, you blow up the shells and everyone dies. But uh, if you want like the, like the actual demonstration because of nightmare mode, it's way more intense. I recommend you watch the playthrough for for Sound of Thunder that I've already done. Where I do this mission on nightmare mode with bots, with three bots, um, and online. Uh, in training mode, you only need to shoot four shells, as far as I recall. But online, you need seven. So just just some extra details, slower paced. Nothing else is going on. I can talk about everything at leisure. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll uh, I'll see you in the future.